Hello and welcome to my Sim Racing Corner. These are the new Logitech G Pro Racing Pedals. They have mid-range features and priced accordingly. In this video, I'm going to run through a detailed look at the features and then onto the track for testing and evaluation. Firstly, let me answer this question as there is some confusion about the usage of these pedals. So, the Logitech G Pro Racing Pedals can either be connected directly to the Logitech G Pro Racing wheelbase or in a standalone configuration on PC, plugging into a spare USB socket. So PC users don't need the Logitech G Pro racing wheelbase to use these pedals. For example, you can happily run these alongside your Thrustmaster or Fanatec wheelbase, basically any wheelbase, no matter what brand, it doesn't matter model, but only on PC. For console gamers, if you use a wheelbase with your console, the pedals will always have to plug directly into the wheelbase. So if you want to use these Logitech G Pro Racing pedals, you'll need a Logitech G Pro Racing wheelbase to go with it. So that's required for that specific usage. Also, these pedals will not plug into the G923, G29, G920, or any older G series of wheelbase. That excludes console compatibility with those wheelbases, but you'll be fine just on PC as I've already covered. Hopefully that should answer that basic question that has caused the confusion out there. So let's move on. The first striking feature you'll notice is the depth of the pedal deck that stretches out behind the pedals. This is a well thought out design feature adding stability to the pedals. If the pedals are going to be used on the floor and not hard mounted, this will help keep the pedals in one spot and prevents them from tipping forward. The pedal deck is plastic and that may give you some concern on its stiffness and general sturdiness. But as you can see here, there were no problems and indeed remain stable even with my body weight bearing into that brake pedal. The pedals are effectively separate modules that are held in place with two bolts and they sit in a 5mm thick metal track so they can be slid laterally. Just loosen the bolts, reposition and then retighten. You can also remove pedals entirely. This is a two pedal throttle and brake configuration. If you don't use the clutch pedal you can simply ditch it and run them like this. The control box that the pedals plug into can also be detached from the pedal deck and since the pedals are also easily removed this offers the possibility of relocating the pedals to a completely different pedal mounting setup if that's something you might want to do. The upper section of the pedals are made from all metal parts. The black piece at the bottom is thick plastic reinforced with ribs. As the pedals sit flush within the structure of the pedal deck, these pedal modules are held insecurely. This box is an accessory that comes with the pedals. You get two spare springs for the throttle and clutch and a selection of foam and elastomer pieces for tuning the firmness of the brake pedal. The springs come in a range of strengths, so exchanging them is for the express purpose of adjusting the resistance of the pedals to suit your preference. Logitech's elegant and unique solution makes this procedure quick and easy. As for the brake, well, slightly different, but equally simple to do.
Whether you're using these pedals with the Logitech G Pro Racing Wheelbase or standalone, either way, you'll need to install the Logitech G Hub software to adjust the pedal input sensitivity and crucial brake force setting. The default sensitivity for all the pedals is set at 50%. The chances are you won't need to alter that too much or at all. 50% is the neutral setting where the pedal input is spread about evenly. If we move the slider to 100%, you can see the pedal is now very sensitive at the beginning of the pedal motion and drops off after halfway. At 0%, this reverses, needing a lot of pedal motion at the start to get any meaningful input. Effectively, this is a bias setting, pushing the input sensitivity to either the beginning or end of the pedal travel. The brake force adjusts the scale of applied weight required to reach 100% input. For a lighter pedal, you reduce the brake force, and of course, you set it higher to increase the measure. At 100 kilograms, I'm unable to fully hit 100% braking input. I'm pushing as much pressure as I can into that brake pedal. My back is against the seat and I'm straining here. Um, you can actually see the metal frame of the sim rig is flexing a bit under this stress. The brake pedal module also appears to be flexing too, and there is a small amount of movement, but the camera is exaggerating this with the addition of the sim rig flex. From my perspective, I can't feel any of this flex. Um, the brake and the pedal plate are holding up against this extreme pressure. Dialing the brake force down to 70 kilograms makes it manageable, but this is still a stretch for me. For me personally, I settled on 50 kilograms. Also, if you study the pedal motion here against the bar, over 90% of the pedal movement takes up just about 50% braking input. As the elastomers compress, they stiffen and take on more load, which is fully expected. And to increase the braking input further beyond this point, I'm pushing more physical weight into the pedal. And those elastomers are just about fully compressed at this point. This gives the pedal a two-stage braking point sensation I can use consistently on track. This does give the pedal a realistic feel, not too dissimilar to the actual brake in my car, so it's familiar and working well for me. I picked up these pedals as soon as they launched and have been using them as my main set since then. Within a couple of days of the pedals arriving, I uploaded my early impressions video. There's a link in the description if you do want to watch that as well. And right from the start to this day, they've shown to be a reliable performer. Setting them up was easy, both from the software side of things and the clever toolless capsule system for swapping out the springs and the elastomers. Adjusting the pedals to get the right feel is important and Logitech have done a good job providing an assortment of accessories for tuning the pedals and I really appreciate that those components are included with the pedals and not an extra paid for accessory. A bugbear for me, which I sometimes come across with other pedal sets, is a limp feeling gas pedal where that spring resistance is far too light. I really do want a decent bit of resistance. I'm using the stiffest spring here and it's feeling pretty good, so I'm really happy with that that I was able to swap out the spring and they've included a nice strong spring to give me the feel I want there. As for the clutch, it's just using spring tension. It's a functional pedal, but lacks a mechanism to give you that clutch biting point feel. As far as I'm aware, modern car clutch pedals don't have that two-stage clutch biting point feel anyway. So it's not exactly a negative versus reality, but it's always nice to have to give the pedal a unique feel. So possibly that will be disappointing as a missing feature for some people out there who uh, like that extra kind of element, a bit of a tactile feedback from the pedal. The gas and clutch pedals use identical mechanisms, the only difference being the pedal face and of course you can change out the spring resistance, uh, so that is another thing I suppose. Um, they both have dampened end and return stops, so they remain you know, quiet in use, so that's, that's kind of nice. Uh, the action is smooth, the overall pedal travel is fine, and along with those magnetic sensors for the inputs, um, they're going to be maintenance free and durable, so there's nothing to complain about really here. Yeah, it's just down the line solid practical pedals. Now let's move on to the brake pedal. This is where things get more interesting for me and hopefully for you as well. Mid to high end pedal sets, 99% of the time will use a load cell sensor for the brake. So technically the function is the same. The load cell is weighing the pressure you're pushing into the brake pedal and that's converted into braking force. But it doesn't end there. There's other moving parts in this process and having personally used and reviewed a few pedal sets already, I can tell you for certain that a good feeling load cell brake pedal is a sum of its parts that goes beyond just the load cell sensor. 
What I'm looking for from the brake pedal is a balance of progressive resistance and pedal travel that provides a realistic sensation and also helps with consistent braking inputs. And the good news is that's exactly what I'm getting from this brake pedal. I don't think it's unfair to say Logitech has borrowed inspiration from Fanatec's brake performance kit for the V3 pedals here, right down to the detail of stacking three separate pieces composing of two different grades of elastomer and a soft foam section. So kind of a smart move from Logitech to adopt a similar tried, tested and well liked upgrade for the Fanatec pedals. They haven't invented anything new here, but that's fine with me. If it works, it works. And I would say the feel of the brake is pretty much in line with the Fanatec V3 pedals with the brake performance kit installed. Well, and as much as I can remember that is, um, I owned the Fanatec pedals a few years back. So uh, yeah, my memory isn't pin sharp on that one, um, but I don't think it's far off the mark. The pedal travel having soft and firm sections is useful for light braking and trail braking. I can touch the pedal lightly and feel the movement and low resistance of the pedal and that mirrors my intention. For heavier braking I push through and hit the firmer portion of the pedal and using more leg muscle to apply harder braking force. It's a natural feeling progressive transition that I find very easy to work with. For reference, I'm using the medium stiffness elastomer setup and the braking force is set at 50 kilograms. Now that works for me, but that doesn't necessarily mean you're gonna find the same setup optimal. There's other factors to bear in mind, you know, are they hard mounted, the angle and height of the pedals, and indeed the height and weight of the individual. You know, so you're gonna have to experiment with this sort of stuff, but there's certainly enough elements there with the adjustable elastomer pieces and the braking force setting. So yeah, you should be able to dial it in and get something that works just right for you. Right from the outset, I had no issues bedding in these pedals. Sometimes when I'm testing out a new pedal set, it takes a few laps to get the feel and get adjusted to, and then a bit more track time to get consistent. But as soon as I began using these Logitech pedals, I felt connected with the car. Under all braking situations, I immediately had consistent, accurate control. They've shown themselves to be a comfortable, easy to use and reliable set of pedals under my feet and structurally sturdy. Having a plastic pedal deck doesn't scream premium quality. I admit that and I'm sure as an observer, you looking at these pedals, that may put you off them. And um, you know, these are not a cheaply priced set of pedals. If you buy the Logitech pedals along with the Logitech G Pro wheelbase at the same time, you do get a reasonable discount off the pedals, making them a pretty good deal though. Uh, so that's something to think about in that sense. But conceivably, you may be looking to buy these pedals standalone, in which case the price is less attractive when weighing up the materials used and the heavy use of plastics. From my point of view, having used these pedals, having tested them, you know they are sturdy and the materials are used perfectly well. The plastic doesn't feel cheap, it's thick and solid, and um, yeah, not used in a flimsy way. The pedal modules are well supported and keep them planted in place, and there's no creaking or any obvious flex. However, there is plastic here, a lot of plastic, and that does reduce the manufacturing costs for Logitech, and I would like to have seen that reflected in the price a bit more. If I simply look back at the experience I've had using these pedals, it's been really good. There's been no dramas or any problems to speak of. They've been great in all games, and Logitech has incorporated some practical features for adjusting the pedals where it counts. So you're getting good you know, performance for your money, but as I said, you know, there's a lot of plastic here. Um, I do think they should be slightly uh, priced lower to reflect that. I think this is a pedal set that partners really well with their excellent G Pro wheelbase. You know, I can't complain about the performance of these pedals. I like them a lot. Um, but are they worth considering as a standalone pedal set? You know, that's another question. Um, well, you know, I've already mentioned, you know, outside of the combined wheelbase pedal set combo discount, if you buy them at the same time, they are less attractive since you are paying a higher price just to buy those pedals by themselves. Um, though, you know, being that they are very capable, they still may be worth putting on your wish list as a potential runner for the future. Maybe after a year, after launch, we'll see some discounts here. Logitech are well known for reducing prices across their product lines after a time. So there is a possibility there. And if that does happen, then, you know, these are worth keeping an eye on because you might be getting a really good, exceptional, uh, exceptionally priced value for money performance kind of, you know, proposition there. But, you know, we'll have to wait for the future on that one. But yeah, overall, nice set of pedals, working well. I'm happy to use them and uh, yeah, they are good stuff. So well done Logitech. Um, they've done a pretty good number on these ones. So yeah, that's good. And that's it guys. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, stay tuned for more as I'll be back soon with something new. So until next time, happy simming and bye bye.